Hello and you're very welcome to the JMAC Podcast. I'm John Quan, of course the podcast brought to you by orgrich.com. You can follow JMAC Podcast to get 15% off on their website. And today I'm joined by Castle Rahan, Senior Football Manager, Brian Donahue, to talk about obviously Castle Rahan's um, Intermediate Championship win last year, the Ulster run, and obviously Cavan's um, league for... So Brian, how are you keeping? Uh, good, John. Yeah, th- uh, thanks a minute for the call. Now looking forward to this. Um, life is good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on midterm here at the minute, and um, everything is hunky dory. Yeah, up, up, up and running again uh, with, with Castle Rahan and um, life's good. Yeah, we had a wee, um, we had a wee break at, at Christmas. Actually, we got away at Christmas, so the, the families. So that was a lovely, lovely week. Oh, of course. So where did you go anywhere neither? Where did you head off to? Yeah, we're in Lanzarote, uh, John. Yeah, which we hadn't done before. Now uh, we just uh, we actually went we went um, uh, late December and we took in Christmas Day as well over there, which was which was different. But look, the kids are the kids are good age now, and we got on the best. It was uh, it was really lovely. Um, plenty of heat uh, and loads of sun and all the rest. It was great to get away. Oh, brilliant stuff! Happy days, happy days. I suppose obviously, um, that's that's great. Obviously, nice to get away for a bit of sun. I suppose you're obviously back in earnest now. Um, obviously after Castro uh, great twenty twenty two campaign. So, I suppose you're you're back in and look forward to the year ahead. Yeah, definitely. Look, I suppose it's it's, it's definitely a case of, of box ticked last year and job done. Job done very professionally and very well. And um. Back to senior now, and, and and back where the club belongs, and back where this group belongs, and we're looking forward to kicking on and and, and developing our squad and developing our game plans, and um, you know it's going to be great. Back to senior, we have Division One campaign to look forward to in the league and the championship. Then, of course, is, is is it's a similar schedule as always in Cavan. It will be it will be August, September, October. So there's um. There's time now to prepare and, uh, you know, it needs lots of work, but uh, definitely in summary, yeah, really looking forward to 23. Mm, brilliant stuff, I suppose, Brian. How would you look back on last year, obviously winning the Intermediate Championship and obviously beating Balliers in a very, very close game and obviously the Ulster Ulster run as well. But overall, uh, like quite a good year for Castro. Yeah, yeah, quite a good year. Look at uh, the, there, there's no doubt that uh, being being in intermediate, I suppose, first uh, John was um, it was an aberration, it was a surprise. It's it's not where that group wanted to be, where where, where they probably should have been. But um, they got caught. You know, the club got caught the previous year, uh, and things rolled. It, it rolled fast from a few defeats uh, um, in the group stages. And sometimes when you lose momentum like that, it's hard to bring it back. And um, they entered a relegation battle and. and and, and Kilgarry put them down in October of um, October of 21, and that was a big blow. So, um, look at I suppose for me, for me, I, I still would have always admired them over the years. Their tenacity, their their their, their courage, just their consistency. You know, they've been such a, a really good ball playing team that um, when the opportunity and the challenge came, I suppose I, I went for it with went for it with gusto and went for it with great uh, with great. Um, determination to, to, to get up and get running and, and, and uh, rejuvenate the group and I suppose we we certainly succeeded at that but look at it, it takes a lot of work it takes it takes all it takes your committee it takes your players it takes everybody rowing rowing in together with the, with the one goal and I think that was important that from the first on the first meeting in in, in Castle Rahan uh, in, in November previously that we literally set out our goals that this is it uh, there is but one main goal was to um achieve championship success and we did that and uh, it was a great campaign yeah some great games some really tough games in the group and on into knockout etc and on and uh delighted delighted with the with the response i got with the with the welcome i suppose with that i and my management team received in the club it was great and uh great memories you know so but i guess like everything it's time now to make make new memories you know so um Championship was great, John. Yeah, yeah. Tough, tough campaigns. Um, groups of four, or, or you get your four group games rather, and then really, um, it really does enter a new phase. Then, and um, you know, your purpose, your purpose in in a group of what 13, 14 with an open draw is, is get through it. You know, get the couple of wins, get the get the results necessary to get yourself up high in the table. And get to the knockout phases then, because I believe it's uh, it, it becomes a new competition. Then it becomes a new beast, and um, you have to be ready. And there is no doubt that I have many, many leaders and many, many big men who who are ready, who are, who are ready to always 
take the opportunity, I guess, you know, so um, very enjoyable, I suppose, overall. Brilliant stuff, Brian. I suppose obviously we're marking on the intermediate championship, and in fairness, it is such a anyone can go on and win it. And like I suppose when you're dragged into the intermediate, you kind of want to get out of there quick enough as possible. But it's getting very, very harder to win year after year, Brian. Yeah, I I would agree with that. Yeah, certainly. Um, I suppose since, since the county board, uh, since the Quinn report now, it had other it had other recommendations. But um, since they tightened up the senior to twelve teams, there's definitely the standard of the intermediate has come up, and um, it is an extremely tough championship to win because there are a lot of tough physical teams in uh, competing in it, and. Um, you need to be ready. You need to be ready for, you know, it's uh, obviously the standard says it's likely off senior. So you're um, maybe you're getting you're betting you're getting a different caliber of referee. You're getting you're getting maybe not all games in Breffney Park, etc. So um, it's different. It's new surroundings for the for the Castle Rahan group. But I would say there are a lot of them. Um, there are a lot of big teams, big clubs who would have aspirations in intermediate of possibly progressing to senior. But um, only one can take the spoils, Chan, and um, that is the, the that is the beauty of sport, and that is the cutthroat nature of the business. That um, winning is everything, and uh, winning is all. So it is a tough competition. There is no doubt. Like um, last year, we had you know we had three we had three big jousts with Coo Hollands, you know, group stage. Uh, twice in the semi-final then as well and you look at teams like Killing Care and then which we got in the group games they were mighty games they really stood to us going forward um, uh, you know because we met a physical opponent we met a strong opponent and you learn a lot about yourself you learn a lot about your your your, your panelists your teammates and um, great games to get to get through the group to get on into the knockout phases because uh, once we get a bit of momentum then in the confidence, you know, we we're always going to be very hard stopped, I think. I suppose kind of <clears throat> looking at the Intermediate Championship last year and obviously the first game was against Hugh Collins and it was up in Virginia, Brian, probably, you know, not not, not a game for the ages. Like, was there a bit of maybe worry or panic, right? You know, we want to up the standards after this game or I suppose what was your thoughts after the first game? Because was there any kind of worry or did you firmly believe we will push on and win this thing? Ah yeah, no look, I I I I would be always half glass half glass full. I would always be confident. I would always be um, looking at the bigger picture and trying to instill your instill your game plan and and, and your set pieces etc. Um, there is no doubt, John, correct that it was a very cagey affair that uh, that night in um, that night in Dolan Park. A huge crowd. There was a huge crowd there from a, from a lot of clubs and. Um, Look at this set up so defensively, like it's and, and look at you can go over around or through these mass defenses, but by Jesus, uh, it's tough work. It's tough work when they have the deep, deep uh, defensive blocks, and um, every possession is so crucial. Um, yes, Dolan Park plays a little bit narrow, but uh, you know it's still it's it's still a it's still a fine stadium. Uh, that was certainly a cagey affair. Yeah. Um, we earned our point that day, that day. We came late. We we came late with with with, with two points to throw it up. Um, certainly not a game for the purists. You know, it was defensive. It was cagey. Every possession was, um, uh, you know, it was moved. It was moved slowly. It was moved methodically, and you earned your you earned your point that day. I suppose um, coming out of it, maybe not losing was 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 good because you know that may have been a setback, but. Um, you got to dust yourself off pretty quickly because the thing rolls fast. You know, you go round one, round two. I'm, I'm not sure when there was a break week, but um, it's generally the three, four, the three, four championship again. Your four games probably in a five week block. You know, you got to you got to dissect the game and, and strip it down, uh, strip it down fairly fast in the 36, 48 hours post game. Then you get back, you get your recovery done, you get back on the pitch, and generally you'll, you'll you'll get you'll get one quality midweek session done because you have to taper down then. Uh, you know, work on your set pieces. And uh, we bit a video on the Friday night and get ready for then for the following weekend. Um, but it was a good start. You know, it brought a lot of um, it brought a lot of publicity. The thing it certainly was the big it certainly was the big dog or some of the big dogs in um, in intermediate of last year that obviously met in the first round. So I'd say the county board were uh, happy with that. You know, it brought a bit of profile to the thing. Um, yeah, we were we were content leaving with with, with I guess a like scope scope for improvement, and that is the way to. That is the way to work it. You have to always keep moving forward. 
<clears throat> you know, I suppose obviously last year would have a lot of self motivation, getting players buying yeah. in, and I know maybe you know definitely Castor had definitely lost a lot of personnel in the last couple of years, like Paul yeah. Smith, like Ronan Flanagan, like Key and Mackey, Sean Brady, to name a few. So you know a lot of leaders have left that dressing room, uh, Brian. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and these guys, these guys need no introduction, John. The, the, their quality, their longevity, the, the the service and the commitment that they have given, uh, I guess, not alone for, 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 for the club Castle Rahan, but also for Cavan has to be commended. You know, wonderful, wonderful players like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Sean Brady, Mackey, these guys in the 1-8 final with Cross Law. They were the game changers and they were the game breakers and the game winners. And um, they have vision and they have character. And I guess... Um, like a lot of clubs around the county and across the country, these guys have personality. And when you lose personality like Ronan Flanagan like that, um, it's not overnight they're replaced, you know. And um, there certainly is. Look, I, I don't believe in terms like transition, though, or stuff like that, or a period of stagnation or um, cementing status. You have to go and compete and you have to get your squad with you and you have to get... Um, try and bring young players through and try and regenerate some of the older players and keep them nice and fresh and get them hungry for their football and get them enjoying it. But um, certainly, yeah, there's there, there's traction, there's traction in every panel all the time. And, and Castle Rahan have, yeah, those players have, have, have played uh, many, many wonderful years and games for the club and they're to be uh, greatly commended for their efforts. But uh, I guess the thing is that uh, you got to keep moving forward, uh, keep bringing the lads through. And driving the thing on because um, the club's in a good place, you know. Fifteens uh, and my and fifteens and seventeens, which is of course the minor, they are competing in Division One in 2023, which is which is brilliant. There's been a lot, a lot of work, a lot of quality coaching going on at underage uh, the last five, six, seven years, and I think I think we will see the fruits of that in the next few years to come. So that's uh, that's good. Uh, uh, Strictly was a brilliant success and. Um, there's good vibes now, good positivity for 23 and beyond, and it's great to be involved, I guess. Hmm, brilliant stuff. And I suppose they kind of pushing on to like the quarters, the semi-finals, the final. Obviously, Brian itself, like you know, when you when you're getting into them positions in Breffney Park, there's no other place you want to be. And Casaran really did make a big push for intermediate last year. So I suppose looking back on the quarters, semis, and finals, great to overline them games. Yeah, look, I, I think game management was a huge strength of ours and is a huge strength of ours. Uh, we have, uh, we, uh, we have, I have, I, I have personalities that can control a game and can, and can do enough structure and have enough wisdom when know when to push, when to hold, and when to circulate ball and, and then drive. Um, I suppose if you rewind a wee bit, John, uh, Dan and Kinnelek was an excellent, uh, an excellent opponent. You know, a really, really good game. Uh, uh, they certainly stayed with us for long stages and they're a team to watch now in the future because I think they'll be fresher They'll be fresher after Stephen long, Baxter back as well. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen's back at the helm and uh, they, they'll be fresher after a long campaign the previous year, which um, probably just didn't give the lads enough of a break. I know the league didn't go too well for them, um, but they, they, they came in a good spurt in the championship and, and, and they have potential, you know, they have potential. And um, that was a great game to get in Kendallac. And, and, you know, we came out, we came out well in the end, a few points to spare. And then uh, had a good uh, encounter with uh, Killing Care and Breffney Park, another good opponent. Yeah, and they have they have some forward power, and Fitzsimons can kick freeze, and, and and they have some strengths for them. So that was a good game to get. Um, round four, then Bally Hayes and Lavi. Yeah, look, there's been plenty said and talked about that, but I guess um, going into the knockout stages, then yeah, we were looking forward. Uh, uh, we picked up uh, it was Bailey on Friday night, and. Uh, that was a comfortable victory, yeah. Uh, I guess they mightn't be too um, impressed with their own showing, but we just came in and wiped them off the field, really. Uh, it was a comfortable victory and on into the semi-final. But, uh, yeah, that was that was good. That was enjoyable. And I guess momentum and confidence then were, were, were beginning to build. And I suppose we drew, we drew Cuchulainz then again in the semi-final, and that was a, a big two-game saga, which um, they were powerful, powerful games, you know, they were brilliant, and we came through, yeah, certainly we were fortunate, we were fortunate on several occasions across the two games, there were opportunities, there were opportunities for our opposition, um, they didn't take them, and uh, we took ours, and that's, and that's what champions do, and that's what winners do, so... Um, yeah, we were lucky, uh, lucky to get out the gap uh, the first day. It could have went, could have went our way at the end of the first day, and then certainly later on in in, in the replay, um, 
the killer blows were the goals, you know, and um, thankfully we came through and that brought us through. But it's just work, John. It's um, it's it's week on week. It's just keeping building, keeping the lads fresh, keeping the energies up high and um, working with your squad and talking to them and seeking to develop because um has ran of a lot of lot of very fine players, uh, great games to get through. You know, um, knockouts were tricky. Yep, you'd expect nothing else because it's um, winner takes all, I guess. I suppose Brian, obviously, the final itself against Bally Hayes, probably a day for the Ducks, not probably a game for the ages, as, <laughs> as we've said before. But look, great to go with line. That's what Castoran wanted to do, Alan Chief. Yeah, definitely. Look, um, uh, whether they came in favourites or not, I'm not sure. Um, we had lost. Uh, we had lost. We had lost Fergal now to a bad knee injury. Fergal Riley in, in in the um, in the drawn in the drawn Cullen's game. He was a huge loss, massive leader and a great man to drive things forward. He was a big, big loss. But um, we rejigged the thing defensively and uh, solidified our back line, You know, and um, I guess I guess set pieces were important that day in the rain. Um, my God, it was a catastrophic day. Like uh, from 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 this. From the early in the week, the forecast was for um, for heavy rain, and it certainly it certainly came through. That the Friday night, Friday night we were going to go out and do a wee bit of scoring practice and that, and we actually just pulled the pin out and we had a wee cup of tea and a chat and and, and got through a few bits inside, which I think is no harm because at mm. that stage of the year, like you've you've hours and hours done on the pitch, John, and it's um. You know, lads getting boots wet, going home late on a Friday. I, I, I think sometimes it's just been a little bit, um, been a little bit more common sense and uh, have a chat inside, uh, get the work done inside. We have uh, we have loads of men to help me there, which is brilliant. And um, get ready then for the Sunday morning and get get ready, get ready for the battle. Um, but uh, like the warm up, we're in the back pitch in Berkeley Park, and just the rain was just. Um, it was catastrophically heavy, I guess, and it never stopped for the whole game, you know. And I suppose uh, one game I, d- I do recall, uh, Castle Ran, when they played, um, it was a Kilgarry in a quarter final a couple of years previously, maybe a 1 7 or a 1 8 game. It was extremely wet as well, and it's probably one of their best ever displays. They were absolutely awesome, their handling, their movement, how precise they were in. A, a, in the, in the set piece and, and moving the men around and and getting the job done and I yeah, funny we mentioned that just in the build up to it that um we've been here before like these guys have these guys have won senior championships you know in the one eight one nine double doubles uh, you know um coming back in the league final on cross keys to take out the gales like the, the the experience and the noose and the tactical knowledge that we have is mighty and um I guess the point of making John is that we were confident, you know, that we knew that if we could play and and and, and match up with with some of their main men, we'd have enough around the field to get the job done. And as it turned out, you know, the goal was the, the goal was the crucial play early on. Um, O'Connell just does what he does, and he and he rifled he rifled her in. It was a big big play, but um, great memories. Yeah, great day and. Um, Delighted to get the job done, I guess. You know, not heavy scoring given the conditions. It was always going to be uh it was always going to be a battle and we done enough. We did we do what we do, you know, and big, big final quarters across all the knockout games, uh, our final quarters have been immense. And um, you know, concession rates have been low against us in final quarters because our game management just ratcheted us up and we, we, we go and we get the job done. But um, great day, great memories. Yeah, Bally Hayes was a tight opponent. You know, it was a good opponent, but um, delighted to, to, to get to get the victory, I guess. I suppose, kind of, <clears throat> Brian, looking back and the whole, I suppose the whole Intermediate Championship, obviously you, yourself, so Bally Hayes did get to the final to sum it off. But looking back, like, do you feel it, the standard was good? Because obviously we need good standards to keep developing cabin football. Yeah, I would say the standards are good, John. Yeah, um, um, I think there's, I think there's scope for improvement with with, with with every club, with every individual, and every every group. You know, you've got to keep keep working on your tactics, on your individual, on your own mental strength. Um, I know there's a lot of good work going on at county board level with regional uh, uh, GPOs coming out and and specific goalkeeper sessions and. 
um, McGovern and um, uh, Conroy and a few other guys are, are going around taking, taking, taking coaches because I think that's important that we educate our coaches across the county uh, and bring the standards up. So I would say, yes, John, good championship, really tough championship to win. Uh, you will you earn an intermediate championship in Cavan of that, there is no doubt. And the 2023 campaign uh, intermediate in Cavan will again be a very tightly contested affair. You'll have your You'll have your three, four strong Verticomas uh, tipped teams again. They'll be surely in the mix, but um, there could be bolters. There's always a bolter and uh, they could get the job done. So there's um, yeah, plenty of good work being done uh, at coaching and at development level. So I, I guess the future is positive. Brilliant stuff, as opposed to the Ulster campaign itself as well. Brian, what, what did you what did you make of it uh, yourself? That's yeah, for that for yeah uh, 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 brilliant. Now look at the, the, there'll be a there'll be a regret with 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 uh, um, being taken out by Cardiff in in in, in Cross McLean. That was that was one that got away, John. You know we could have we could have maybe should have got to a final to take on Galbally, who are a very fine team and went the whole way to Croke Park. Um, yeah, I suppose we had a we had a five week break. We had a five week break post final, and we let the lads have some well deserved R and R for a few days. Uh, week one, we literally stripped out the week, which was um, always memorable. You know, Championship Mondays are there to be treasured and to be there to be respected and enjoyed. And um, uh, brilliant, brilliant fun, uh, and we regrouped again the following weekend. There was a reserve game, and I suppose what we had a four-week run in then, which is certainly long. You know, three mm. might have been better, um, mm. but it's fine. And you know, we 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 faced off against uh, a very strong uh, a Devonish team up in Edirne. Um Great stadium, brilliant, uh, brilliant surface. Funny for Mana our, um for Manor are currently playing their home league games there now, and Brewster's just um, uh, Brewster's wet. You know they need to they need to get out, get that sod and get it get it up to better standards at the minute. But um, Edirne was brilliant surface, and they I suppose no, no more similar to ourselves. They're a well established senior team and probably shouldn't have been intermediate, but that was a brilliant game. Um, really, really, really a game that uh, was was excellent for Castle Brown. Or their, their first our first um, our first provincial win. And a hard-earned win against a tough opponent. They had the O'Briens coming from half back, really pacey, uh, really pacey team. Barry Mulrone dictating a bit of stuff around the middle. Good kick passer. They gave us problems now, you know. And it went to ten nine. It went to ten nine with eleven or twelve minutes to go. And then we just had a massive last quarter with four points to steal the victory. Uh, not to steal it, but to get the job done. I guess thirteen ten. Um, Great game, a game that will do our younger players and our older players and everybody a power good, you know. But we knew, like, we we, we, we we knew we're in a good place. We've played road in a challenge game a few weeks before that and took them out uh, down in um, down in Offaly. And, uh, you know, we knew that the standard of player we had is well able to compete at that provincial level. So I guess the thing was that you have your county championship won and now you're going in, and I guess the point I always make to lads is you're now playing. You're now playing champions. You're playing the champion now of every respective county. So I think these provincial um, campaigns are brilliant competitions. Mm-hmm. So if you look, you look at John at the stand, the standard of Gilku and 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 Glenn and mm-hmm. these guys. Like mm-hmm. they're, they're those clubs are, they are they are at inter county standard of preparation and individual yeah, yeah. individual attention to detail. Like it's fantastic, you know. Yeah. And to be mixing shoulders there in 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 Ulster for Castle Ran and for and for our guys was um, very rewarding campaign. Great days, uh, you know. We went deep deep into the championship. Um, Cross McLean was the disappointment. Just uh, we got caught. We got caught in the last quarter with a few late sucker punches of runners. They caused us problems, uh, as runners will do to most teams if they commit the if they commit the pods. Um, they were a big, physical, strong, good of team. And they took us out by a point. Our conversion rates on the day were extremely poor, our worst of the year, and we got caught. But um, look at, uh, you know, you, you, you wipe it now. You, you obviously, we'll, 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 we'll move forward. We learn from it. I learn from it. There's things that we need to do differently and better as a management and things the players must improve on as well. And I guess... It's to identify those and to bring the thing forward is 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 the only way to go. You know that um, these failings, mistakes are, 
Now they're fine, but they can't be repeated. And that's, you know, mistakes with individuals are grand on an individual or technical basis. But if you want to go on deep into championship, you can't be making these uh, repetitive same mistakes. You've got to, you've got to get the standards up and keep driving the thing on. But um, yeah, and then I guess, I guess the cut off Galbally then it went, it went on for weeks with Frost and actually never got it played until late December, which was very, very late. Um, but anyway, Galbally, Galbally got the job done and they put a massive press on, um, they put a huge, huge press on on, on the Cordoff keeper and there's learnings for us there too, you know, it'd be a huge strength of our game and they were doing stuff that, you know, that we can learn from because that's, that's coaching, that's, uh, that, 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 that's learning, it's, it's, it's taken, it's taking stuff from winners and putting your own tweak on it that suits yourself and driving the thing on, um, is how I operate, you know. But uh, I suppose, in summary, a very rewarding, enjoyable uh, provincial campaign, John, and great days. You know, great for the club, great buzz around the town, Bally Gym stuff for the for the seven, eight, nine weeks, and um, the lads took a, a, a good, long, well-deserved break then around the Christmas and into January. So we're slowly winding up the winding up the trips again, getting ready to go, but. Um, I think the Ulster Club Championship at both uh, at both even junior. You look at Drumlane, who did very well at junior, mm. and Drumlane Drumlane might have regrets because they 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 had a lot of they had a lot of boxes uh, they had a lot of boxes ticked in that intermediate. Look, I'm not sure it's penalties the right way to finish it, but um, at, at, at junior, intermediate, and senior, the standards are very very high uh, across uh, across that Ulster Championship campaign. You know, Stephanie, I think I think they're a good bit high. I think they're a good bit higher than even. Probably, look at they're, they're higher than Leinster. There is no doubt, you know. Like Kilmacud have walked. They, you know, they com- they comfortably came through Leinster, John. I think there's no point in saying otherwise, you know. Like they're a good step ahead of all mm. the all the other counties yeah. in Leinster. And then the Galway, the, the Galway champions. Yeah, they're 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 a fine side. Yeah, uh, mm. they're a fine side. And um, then you had the the Kerry crowd came through as well. But look, the Kerry. Kerry system is, is, is it, it's it's for them. It's you know it's a bit um, it's strange. Like you look at the Kerry Intermediate Championship next year, like there's four there's four seeded teams in it. It's just bananas, John. Like yeah. <laughs> I think you need like a, dig- yeah. a, dig- a degree in GAA to understand it. I don't understand yeah. it myself. Yeah. Yeah. Look, the, what the, there's eight senior clubs and they they compete in the county championship and then there's a club thing as well. But um, like uh, there's like there's um, there's teams there that have got demoted that would you know they'd win senior championship in many many other counties you know they, and they have their amalgamations and that's brilliant it's it's a model many counties could look at mm. you're a junior player and Fossa you you know the 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 Cliff and and the brother and these guys like they have played a phenomenal amount of football last year and it does give all players in Kerry the opportunity to play senior you know it's good but you need buy-in with that I, I, like the, the, it's well cemented down there they've they, they've cemented that over years and years and the best luck to them you know obviously they're doing many things right given the amount of Ireland's they've won but um yeah uh, uh championship was great last year championship was good and um happy out John hmm Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. I suppose, kind of like looking back on the Ulster run, like you feel, of course, you yeah. did kind of say there was a bit of a missed opportunity. You know, Bali, uh, obviously, we're the strongest team, but like you feel there's wee bits and pieces. Obviously, you can work on for the years ahead, whatever teams you get involved in, but do you feel a bit of a missed opportunity looking back? I think so, yeah. The, look, there, there will be regrets on that. There will be regrets on um, on, on, on not on not maybe making an Ulster final, which would have been phenomenal um, to get that to get that wee step further on into the on into the last two would have been a brilliant um, brilliant occasion. It would have been mighty to get there. Uh, we had enough possession over the hour against Cardiff to beat them, and we didn't do enough. I didn't do enough. We didn't do enough. Um, uh, we got caught. We got caught. We 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 needed to convert more more chances, more more free kicks, more f- shots from play. We didn't do enough of everything, and we got caught. But it's no fault of the lads, you know. And we had an honest debrief after in the dressing room. Um, and it's you know you you you, you call things out, but you got to be man enough. To, to step up and say, uh, lads, we ju- today we came up short, and there's no shame in that, you know. There's no shame in it once you learn and you uh, regroup and, and go at it again, you know. So, um, 
yeah, missed opportunity, John. But look at C'est la vie. You gotta, you gotta keep going. There is, there's no tomorrow, no ifs or buts or should have or would have or could have. Just go and win the ball and do your job. You know, kick it over the bar and mark your man. You know, there's enough. Um, there's enough in a squad to get the thing done if they're all bite in together. And um, we we're in a good place. Yeah, we're we're we're, we're going to drive on now. Brilliant stuff, obviously great incentive for the year ahead. And I suppose kind of uh, looking back on previous coaching experience, Brian, obviously you've been involved with the Balnea senior footballers, the Lurgan ladies, the Calvin ladies, and obviously intermediate success with Balnea in 2020. So was looking back on that experience, Brian. Yeah, brilliant. And, and look, at I, I would have a lot of, I would, have, I, I would have a strong bond with with, with all those Balnea players. Like they, they gave, they gave Adrian and Graham and Connor and I. They gave us wonderful, wonderful days over the two, three years we were there, and um, a great, great club, a great club. Um, um, they're 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 um, they're running at a high level down there. Um, great memories, John. I guess it was a, it was a COVID championship, you know. Um, probably certainly there's one that you know we never got into Ulster at that time in Banya. You know, the, it just literally was wiped out. There was. Um, it was a championship Monday and it went on for a few days and four or five days later, the next weekend, the, the curtain was pulled on everything across the country, which I suppose in reflection was just bananas, like, you know, just for a bad flu. But look, at you know, it is what it is. That's that's a, that's a different thing. We're here to chat and coach and football, etc. But yeah, great days in Balanya. And uh, yeah, look, at we, we, we were very impressive uh, championship winners that year, I guess, you know, so um but well, I suppose like every group, you talk about the men that have left Castle Rand, there's been some big warriors now departed from Balnea. But look, that opens opportunity for other guys to step up because you can't stay forever. You know, you have to, you, you play your time and you, and, and you do your bits and you bring a lot of value to the party, to the thing. Um, but Banya have big men, they have big leaders and they have ball winners and they kick long and they kick hard and they play hard. They party hard too, which is great, you know. Uh, no more than my own men here, but uh, good memories, John. Yeah, uh, um, fond memories of my time in Balnea, and they're in a good place now. They've, they've a great chairman there, and they're keen to they're keen to, to drive the thing on. I guess. Hmm. I suppose, Brian, like the COVID year, coaching in COVID year, like self motivation would have been had to be an all, all time yeah. high, and you're not really meeting the players, you're getting them to do individual stuff. So, I suppose coaching within that year, Brian, what did you make of it? Yeah, it, it was a challenge. Yeah, it certainly was a challenge, but in a in a perverse way for a team like Balnea that had that had many many uh, uh, you know high high training age. I th- I think it I think it was a good thing because it actually kept a lot of a lot of the main men very fresh that year, John. You know there was a shortened league. Uh, uh, there was six. There was the, the the league was split in half. There was five six. Um, Five six league games and funny Balnea topped the group that year and went into a semi final with um, with Gown and Balnea, which you lost on the night, but it's no shame in that. Um, uh, it's certainly I think it I think it helped uh, I think it helped Balnea that uh, that that year. We had a lot of energy for when the championship came around, um, but I guess I guess uh, having Zoom calls, having chats like that. Now look at it is probably the future of a lot of. Um, a lot of coaching and a lot of video work that you're not bringing your that you're not bringing your players physically to the one point, because there is travel involved. There's cost of travel. Um, if you can get your video work done and a few your tactical meetings and your pod meetings and your group meetings, if you can get all that done online, I think you're saving time. I suppose both for the coach and your family and for players. You know, that's a way forward. Uh, that's a way forward there. But. Um, Coaching in a COVID year was challenging. Yeah, there was uh, there was restrictions, there was limitations. You had the water breaks, which I suppose you look back now, you'd nearly start an odd game, 18, 19 minutes in. You'd love a you'd love a water break then for ninety seconds. But look, at that's fine. You can't. Would do you it. like if that could come back in? Yeah, possibly. No, no. I would say not. No, you run the thirty minutes. Maybe to return them where Forna might be an option, but I don't think that's going to happen because um, I guess there was a few high-profile incidents with Moira Forna. As you know, you had McIntyre blocking restarts for 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 Mayo, and you had Jason Sherlock nearly as a sixth, seventh forward for Dublin for many years, in and out all the time. So there's um, there's pros and cons that way, but. I guess it it is it is challenging to get a message to your players on the pitch, like you look at Davy Fitzgerald John last weekend in the, <laughs> in the hurling with them walkie talkie things behind the goals to his goalkeeper. So that's ridiculous. If he can't look up and find space for 
he can't locate space, the goalkeeper himself now I'm talking about, if he can't identify where the space and where the movements are, if he needs Davy Fitzgerald to um, <laughs> instruct him in his ear, like, they've got a problem, you know. And I think some of the pundits were saying, like, sure, that's never going to work in the championship when there's 35, 40,000 in Semple Stadium and the noise and the standards is is, is immense, you know. But um, it is innovation too, of course. But, um, yeah, COVID, COVID coaching was challenging. COVID coaching was challenging. There were many limitations. There were things you couldn't do. You had to keep it tight in pods for the first few weeks back until you got back into the full contact. But uh, thankfully, I suppose, as a nation and as a society, we, we've, we've turned away from that now. But it was a very challenging, uh, very challenging two years for, for youngsters and for everybody. And, you know, I suppose as a teacher, I see the changes that it's brought. You know, um, uh, it, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be down the line where we see the effects of it because... <laughs> When you're locked up, John, for two years, effectively inverted commas, like we all were. I think it changed. Uh, it changes a lot of things. It made things challenging. It made things hard. Communication, and we were, were directed a lot online. And um, it's not easy. Not easy for. Not easy for the youngsters. Certainly. Mm, yeah, it definitely has changed a lot of things. I suppose when you are kind of coaching within that to your brain itself, and obviously you don't know maybe what way people's family situations are and the way maybe lads' mm. heads can be at times. So I suppose you kind of have to tread with caution. Yeah, absolutely. You have to like out of out of huge respect for every group and for every individual because it's a choice. You know, this is a choice that you you, you commit to you commit to to to, to, to your to your uh, schedule of games, to your schedule of training, and uh, and um. Certainly, family, family members, family um, connections have to be respected. If they have older people, if they have uh, more vulnerable members of society, and if you know if they step away, you respect that decision. Uh, I guess you know. So you have to tread carefully, and you always just uh, communication. I think is the key, John. That you just. Um, try and cross these wee bridges before any uh, t- challenges or issues might arise. Hmm, brilliant stuff, Brian, brilliant stuff. So it's kind of touching on to your ladies' kind of experience with the coach, with the Cavs and ladies. Yeah. Obviously, Lurk ladies, we've seen the success that the Lurk and ladies have had in the last couple of years. It's been probably not short of a remarkable great coach going on up there, I suppose. But how did you enjoy the Cavs and ladies coaching? Yeah, good, good. I suppose uh, I did a year first with Lurgan way back, probably one seven, um, with Finney and Farrell. Finney was a good coach, and um, that was very good. I suppose I dipped in and out then for a few years with the county ladies, but um, yeah, Lurgan had a phenomenal year last year, and, and I and I guess just to commend them on on their Ulster Minor Championship win, and um, there's no doubt avoiding it, John. They won it at an absolute canter. They have a plethora of very, very talented players, multi-sport players. Um, they have an extremely young squad and uh, there's great scope there for a very uh, innovative, impressive coach to come in and, and to look on and to try and uh, develop and build with them. Um, they, re, they, reclaimed, they reclaimed the senior championship last year, Donald Farley, uh, Emmett Daly. Uh, they did a lot of uh, they did a lot of really quality work with that team, and they're in a good place. Uh, they're in a good place up there. I think I think that there's no doubt the numbers helped. They have uh, they have uh, big numbers around the town, and and that certainly helps. Now it presents other challenges with your numbers at, at at youth grade that you have to cater for because. Um, uh, they they need they need they need servicing. They need catering for if you've two teams that are on the fourteen, that are on two teams that are on the twelve and under sixteen. That needs a lot of coaches. Needs a lot of parents all aligned together. Uh, but Lurgan are great, yeah. And uh, with Neve Daly and a few of our co-players, um, and uh, Paul Halpin, they certainly kicked on into Ulster and beyond. That was a really enjoyable um, minor success for Lurgan to top off the the, the treble last. You know the one the. Uh, they won the league, they won the reserve, they won everything, and uh, they're in a good place now. Now, Donald and Emmett have moved on to Karen Ross, and best of luck to them there. But Lurgan are in a good place. Yeah, county ladies, I suppose, yeah, um, I guess, um, enjoyed the three years. Yeah, James Daly was great. Me and James would have a very strong bond with Eamon, uh, Eamon Brady as well from Bally Hayes. We got on really well. Um it's just, I guess, the county senior ladies, it, the whole thing is just not aligned for me at the minute, if I was taking a broader view of it. Um, there's work to be done. There's work to be done across committee level, across strategy level, across everything. They have players there. Look, they're dipping in and out, um, some of them. 
if they could just align the thing a little bit better and get more of a maybe three, four year plan in place, I don't know. You know, uh, uh, there would be some element of frustration there, John, I guess, from from the few years we had. I think the best chance we had was probably the first year, but we got caught in um, we got caught in Parnell Park uh, in, a, in a league final. That was probably, in hindsight, our best opportunity to get to Division 1. And that Cavan ladies team, they need to get... They need to get up to a higher grade. If they could get to grade one in the league, I think it would be great for them. You know, you look at Kerry, who had a very excellent year last year in the championship. Uh, the Kerry ladies now, they achieved promotion last year in the league. Uh, maybe a surprise that they took out Armagh, but uh, they kicked on then. And look at them now at the minute. They have had a very good start to the 23 leagues. So there's a world of players in Cavan. And, and you know, Loretto are churning out uh, winning 16s and minor teams and all that. Um but I don't think as a county we're bringing through enough of these players together at the one time that um, they need to come through. More of them needs to come together. And I guess to stay at it, you know, to stay at it would, I think it would help them if, if they could um, mobilize the whole troops, I guess, is the point I'm making. Because uh, we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of fine female players in Cavan and, and look at the best look them now. They had a... Did a good win, uh, good win uh, uh, last week uh, against Westmead, and they have a big game coming up this weekend. Um, so they have uh, they have scope for improvement. They have scope for progression. Uh, senior championship will be tough, you know. Senior championship will be tough, but um, they certainly should be targeting an Ulster championship, you know. Armagh, Armagh, and Donegal probably maybe on paper a little bit stronger, but there's no reason why they can't go on and win it. So um, they have potential, I guess, you know, and. How you communicate changes with the females, how you communicate with your uh, with your underage team changes, John, and how you communicate then with a senior men's team changes as well. You know, because there's um, there's many differences in how you would maybe operate, which is all positive. Definitely, definitely, you can learn a lot from that at home with your wife, Brian. Don't worry. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> brilliant stuff. Brilliant stuff. No good stuff. And I suppose, obviously, we kind of see like in recent years, maybe with the Cavan ladies, like maybe playing on like the likes of the Three G, and maybe not getting maybe the facilities that they absolutely weren't and deserve because they're mighty football and team. Like they're probably the dude to deserve the best. I think they do, yeah. Uh, now, look, a, a merger, a merger with LGFA, uh, the G and the Camogie, um I think that's going to be tricky. I think I, I think it would be absolutely amazing if it happens because I know firsthand from the ladies, uh, sourcing pitches, sourcing uh, resources is very tricky. It's very challenging. You don't get them. The clubs don't get them. Uh, and obviously, that's their own business, but um, it's tough for the ladies because uh, 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 training could change from A to B to C, you know, if, if, but look at I guess if um, if the polo grounds come online, that could be a brilliant base for all of our county teams. You know, um, integrating them across will prove it, it. It will prove challenging. Now, Mary McAleese John has a big, big job on her hands. You look at the back end last week of the UL uh, Camogie players. Like that's just farcical what happened there in the uh, O'Connor Cup. No, not the O'Connor. Uh, O'Connor's the soccer, is it? No, O'Connor's the ladies, uh, 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 the ladies uh, footballing at uh, third level. But the UL Camogie players were, you know, in a group of four and they were told if you win by 33 points, we will advance to the parcel, I think. If they, they, they'll advance to the knockout stages and then emails came through and for a game that took place last before Christmas, it's revised by this, um, by this Komogi CCCC and that stuff is just rotten, you know. Like they were kicked out on technicalities, like that's, you know, that's terrible and the clashes across inter-county, if you look back over the last few years of dual players, high profile uh, f uh, uh, footballing and camogie games going against each other. Let's just say, John, the camogie crowd, in my opinion, are not helping themselves. You know, it needs to be better, needs to be better aligned and better, better structure that you can. Now, maybe it's impossible. Maybe... Maybe these dual players, uh, um, it, it, it's tricky, you know, it's tricky, but certainly like there's been some high profile Cork players to name one that have had to make big decisions, whether they go and play the Camogie one day or the football on the same day that it's not happening. And that's um, the press and the publicity that comes from it doesn't help the thing. And last week was, you know, that was terrible. You see a line of girls 
on a on a on a, on a fence at the knockout games in a, in a silent, respectful, peaceful protest, wearing their college jerseys. But it's not good for the overall uh, for the overall view. Like TUD won the championship, and that probably got lost in the whole um, in the whole chat about the thing. But um, and, and and look at uh, Cavan Camogie in a great year last year under Philip, and they are looking to drive on now and drive the thing on too. But again, I suppose you're probably looking at some of the same players that would be the main players for both football and um, uh, football and, and Camogie and Cavan. So it's um, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to keep the thing aligned. Uh, uh, so hopefully, hopefully Phillips Camogie girls kick on again now because they have potential. Like and, and he's doing a good job. Hmm. Absolutely, absolutely, Perrine. I suppose touching on to the Cavan end of things, obviously a very good start to the National League campaign and obviously in the McKenna Cup as well. I suppose what have you made of Cavan's fortunes uh, thus far? Yeah, I have to say there's a really good energy and vibe, uh, John, with Cavan this year. Um, I picked up I picked up the Armagh game on a horrible night in Breffney Park. Now, Tyrone got away from us, but um, that's 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 one that seems to happen a bit for some reason. But um, good McKenna Cup campaign. Uh, Mickey Graham got a look at a lot of players. There's a lot of depth across our county, across uh, senior intermediate clubs and junior. Uh, he's an excellent squad to pick from. I think Cavan are a good place. Uh, McVitie's back. He's really solidified the sixth there, and he's also attacking very well. Um, and I like that half back line actually. Uh, um, Holla himself and Young Madden from Ghana. That's it's very dynamic. Cavan uh, are a good place. Yeah. Now the Longford, as we chat here in midterm, John, we're I suppose they're, they're getting ready now for they're getting ready for Longford, which is a massive game in a, in 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 a few days time in Breffney Park. So fingers crossed that goes well because um, if we could check out Longford, which we have to do and which we must do because sometimes football is all about beating your neighbour. That really for us is a no lose situation, no no lose game. We can't lose that. Uh, you know we need to drive on and keep the thing progressing. Um, it would be great to get back to grade two in the league. You know dropping from two to three to four was just. Yeah. It didn't help us. It didn't help us in the Talton. It didn't, you know. Yeah. Um, Could you know like the form of Monaghan and Donegal at the minute? Like the form, they're very up and yeah. down at the minute. Like. I wouldn't say maybe we're at Division 1 yet, but like I think we're nearly at the similar standard of the likes of Money, mm. Monaghan and Donegal, when we play to our very best. I would agree, yeah. And you look at Monaghan, you have to commend them that they've held on for so many years. Now, on the other on the other hand, one might say Monaghan's annual three, four, five massive uh, expenditure of energy and, and, and footballing uh, intelligence to get through in a Division 1 league campaign. Maybe that's cost them a little bit down the line then in the championship that they've seemed to run out of steam in that. But Jesus, they have they have been um, very solid in Division 1 now for long, long many years. Now they're under a wee bit of pressure at the minute. Again, that's um, there's a, a six-point game coming with them. Uh, is it Donegal Monaghan this weekend, John? Yes, yeah. Yeah, that that's a yeah. colossal game. The loser, the loser of that game uh, um, could possibly go to grade two next year in the league, you know. But mm. coming back to Cavan, I guess. Uh, with a hamstring injury as well. Yes, I, I hear that. And I hear that's bad. I hear his hamstring is bad. Yeah, uh, so. that's massive. That's massive, yeah. Yeah, what's bad now? And look, there's obviously stages of hamstring, but uh, if he's out for uh, several weeks of the league, they could struggle up front now that the Murphy Maestro has retired. But um, Cavan need to get out of Grade Three. Let's get out of it. Let's get back up where we belong in Grade mm-hmm. Two, where we can solidify, and then maybe if you deepen your squad and get the younger lads up to the conditioning, get them up to the levels that Garoud is at, like you know. That 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 your Connor Brady's and these guys are at because they're in supreme physical condition. If we can build our younger players there, I think we we certainly uh, cement our status in um, in Grade Two, and then you look to kick on maybe back into Division One mm. because it can be done. You know, Russ Common of Russ Common of really kicked on now with. Uh, and he's brought many new players back into the squad and, and bringing the older players off the bench now slash more experienced players 
when you're finishing with your Donny Smiths and these guys on the field and Enda Smith and they're closing out the game for you, they're the finishers. Like that's a really interesting, uh, it's a really interesting um, philosophy and uh, technique. But um, we have two from two, yeah, and comfortably. And I was delighted to see us just wipe the floor with Tipperary. Like you know, mm. we, we, we we've been at many of these games, John. You and I were were Kavanagh plus two plus three, and we make it sticky in the last quarter, and we get over the line and we get the points done. But just is to, it a belief oh, thing, Brian? A belief thing within ourselves to push ourselves on. Uh, it could be a belief thing, yeah. Maybe structurally as well. We need a few more men higher up the field. But, um, yeah, it could be a belief thing, John. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But uh, there's certainly a fresh vibe and a fresh energy with Calvin this year. And there is no, you know, the guys in the pod would say it, um, uh, um, and Mickey Brennan and uh, Damien and Paul, um, there's no there's no guarantee now that inverted commas all these uh, more experienced players shall we say long serving players coming back are going to get back into the team and in fact i think there's going to be a wee bit of uh, f- traction and f- uh, flux in the team this year which i think will keep the thing more more honest more energetic mm. um mm. <clears throat> like we have a, we have a strong squad cavan and, and and you know you, you'd have to commend those the long serving players john that we have the Garodes and the killian brady's uh, and the guys, uh, Martin Wiley's, these guys that have committed, uh, uh, our goalkeeper as well, Raymond, they have given such marvellous service to Cavan for for long, long many years. And you have to commend their longevity and their mm. commitment to their conditioning and their nutrition because these guys are at the top of their game, you know, and, and, and they bring they bring great energy and great value to Cavan. We're in a good place, yeah. We're going to have Armagh in Breffley Park in the middle of April in a first round, um, the third week of April, John, in a championship match. Look, they'll, we they'll, have to beat Antrim first. Have to beat Antrim first. Yeah. Ah, that'll be, that'll be uh, they'll dismiss Antrim. Um, <laughs> they'll dismiss Antrim comfortably, yeah. Um, and then that'll be a great game. That'll be a great game at Breffney Park. Like draw is brilliant, you know. And that we have we 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 have the home game. Now, 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 now they'll bring a lot of they'll bring a lot of forward power, but they have weaknesses in defence and they have the, they have the goalkeeper coming out the field, which is an excellent. Uh, it's an interesting ploy, shall we say? But um, they're in Division One, and you know we traditionally have ha- have a good record against our man the last few years. Now they've solidified up there, but I guess. Um, Nine years of nine years of team building with McGinney is beginning to pay off, maybe you know. Mm. So we'll see. But Cavan, uh, Cavan are yeah, Cavan are fine team. Cavan have a lot going for them. Uh, uh, like the energy, like the vibe at the minute. Um, we have men to come back in there to challenge for places, and I please God, thing goes well against um against Longford. We have four home league games left after beating um after beating Westmead, we had four home league games left. So if we can take seven, eight points out of those, we'll get to ten. And I think ten should see us into a top two and into a promotion place, which would be exactly where we need to be. Get to get to Croke Park again and, and get into a league final and just go and win it because um we can do it, you know. So um yeah it's positive John. It's good. Some of the younger players obviously coming in this year as well, Brian, the likes of Oshin Brady, uh, Ryan yeah. O'Neill, the likes of Tierna Madden. Like, it is really good to see Mickey kind of bringing these lads up because, as you said, the, the stages that have been there, like Killian Clark, Killian Brady, likes to grow McCarran, maybe just waiting for some of these boys to come back. But it's great to see, you know, young, fresh players come in. Yeah, I would agree, John. Yeah, look, you can't beat the bit of youth, the bit of the bit of the bit of um, uh, speed, endurance, the bit of freshness, and, and and look at some of these young players have no fear. They will just go for it. Uh, uh, they, they they're able for the workload once they get the conditioning. And you know, look at Andre is obviously an expert in his field in there. Um, we have uh, we have a very very astute uh, we have very astute athletic development coach in there. Like he's operating clearly at an extremely high level. I you know you you chat to Oshin, you know the detail and the work that's going on in there is that it's at elite level. It's at world class level because he is uh, he came very highly regarded to the position. Um, definitely, John. Yeah, your Oshin Brady's and your Ryan O'Neill's. He was uh, he was robust uh, that full forward. He was robust and effective. Now the last day and now look at Patrick Lynch and a few others will be coming back in to challenge him but that's what you need you want lads mm, yeah, competition say, yeah <clears throat> absolutely a competition for places that i'm in the jersey now john and you need to come and play your best uh, uh, training sessions and and take it off me because um competition will drive everybody forward
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's been a great, great start. I suppose kinda of hope those keeps uh, springing a turn. I suppose there has been obviously a few changes with the Cavan set up, obviously likes of Chris Conroy going, Niall Murray finishing up and likes of Keevy Norley Cormack. So obviously a lot of boys have departed, coaching and things. Obviously James Burke from Mayo's came in, Shawnee Johnson's departed the scene, Marty Curry. So like it has been a lot of headaches maybe for Mickey Graham without yeah, I think so. I think um, I, I think there, there are certainly changes on the on the backroom team as well. Um, don't know much about this Burke guy, uh, uh, but uh, but it's it's been positive so far. I know they're pressing this. They're, they're they're certainly pressing a little higher up the field, and and that's good. That's positive that they want to turn the ball over higher. Uh, and once they press, you look at the key. Then is the second phase that that they stay up high and and dominate them because. Um, it can be demoralising when you're turned over on your own kick out. You know, uh, um, it would be an area of the game. Obviously, with the set pieces, you have uh, you have 40 kick outs both sides of the field. There's there's scope there to, to to retain your own possession as high up the field as you can, or as swiftly, or whatever your tactics are. But if we can put a squeeze on, we're in Division Three, John. I pin them, pin the pin them back high up the field, and. Um, Close them in uh, next weekend. Like like Longford of a big goalkeeper, he's uh, serving there a long, long time. I know around the middle of the field, they wouldn't look at. Hopefully, we're qualitatively superior, but I would like us to just take the game too long for on the front foot. And, like a temporary uh, sort of performance. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, and look at there was a bad goal given away early. That can happen. You know, there was a root one. There was a size mismatch there, but. If we're pressing high up the field and and and, and playing the game and 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 their half, you know, it can be good because the energy the energy we have coming from our five six seven is very impressive at the minute. You know, they're they're multifunctional players. Uh, uh, Tiernan Tiernan Madden's very fine player. Uh, his brother's playing well on the on the three quarter line as well. Um, and of course, you know, McVitie really put on an exceptional performance the last day. He was great. The fellas, back, he's right? Great to see yeah. back. It's kind of like a Christmas present for Calvin fans. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh, he travelled for the few years in Australia and he's back. He's fresh. He's hungry. Obviously, he's retained his uh, conditioning because he's always was a fine athlete uh, and a good player. But I think he's a leader. It's um, You look at the response. Or the response to the temporary goal was McVitie breaking from midfield. And it was like, give me the ball. Or give me the ball. I'm going. And he lovely dummy solo. And he clipped it over from 33, 34 metres. And that's what you want. You know, there's many players, John, when you're plus five, plus six, plus seven, would look to tag on a few scores and add to the thing. But... When you're a point or two down, like some of the, there's the time you want the men to step up and and and, and win the ball and move the ball and make the right decisions. And um, McVitie is leading, he's leading the line very impressively at the minute. So it's um, it's good. And and obviously they're picking up a few injuries here and there. Hopefully Garoud will be back soon. I'd love to. He'd love to play him high up the field like the Gales did last year because uh, there were mm. some games last year he was um, uh, unmarkable, shall we say? You know. Um, once the quality of the ball comes in, he is such a physical specimen that he can do many things well. But um, Kavner in a good place, yeah. And Mickey Graham is certainly an astute guy. He's doing, uh, he's doing, he's doing the thing well at the minute. Hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. I suppose. Would you have ever any kind of aspirations to go on and manage to Kavner senior lads? Oh, yeah, look at. Uh, I'm happy at the minute with Castle Rahan, John. But look at, yeah, sure. Who knows down the line? Um, who knows down the line what openings or what uh, opportunity will come? But certainly, yeah, uh, it would be it it would be an honour. It would be uh, something you could you could look at in the future. Um, timing, I guess, and opportunity is everything in life, and that would have to be all. You'd have to get all your all your ducks in a row, I guess, would be uh, would be the thing. But uh, look at I'm learning as a coach. I'm learning as a manager, and. Um, enjoying it you know because it, it's football it's football and what you know you know what they say it's the it's the most important of all our unimportant things in life this footballing lark and um things are going good so uh yeah uh, uh Cavan could be down the line who knows but um uh, it's 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 positive things are things are fine Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. I had to ask you. Obviously, day about the Cavic in nineteen seventeen, you had your big day in Clonus last summer. Obviously, it's great to see that team get the representation, their big day out in Clonus and some remarkable players in that team, Brian. Yeah, 
Yeah, that was brilliant. Yeah, and and look to commend the county board and Susan Brady on on just the professionalism and how the whole um how the whole day was handled. Like um, Martin McHugh was back and we were bussed and we were fed and we were wined and dined and it was just marvelous day. Now the the Derry Donegal game was the also final. It was abominable abomination, as they say, with them. Um, the, the style of play, but that's welcome to Andrew County. Um, it was a great day, John. It was great. And then we came back to the Kilmore that night and the Ulster Council took over and uh, there was presentations and that. It was really nice to see the the, the, the squad back together and um, an enjoyable an enjoyable day. And um, But, you know, we won 1-20 in 20 as well. I guess it's time now to maybe stop talking about the 97 one and that and go on and let's win a few more and let's yeah. kick on into the in, into the campaign and go and win another Ulster Championship. Like 20 was brilliant. Mm-hmm. Uh, 20 was brilliant. Just probably not the same with the COVID thing, but look, it's still a very hard-earned, uh, uh, excellent Ulster Championship and um, Cavan need to be need to be getting back into those big games because uh, that's where it's at. You know, winning championships is what it's all about. Absolutely, I suppose, Brian, from a coaching head of anything, who be you, you suppose your coaching influences? Yeah, look, Philip Kerr runs, uh, Philip Kerr, uh, Maher Felter, he's a very astute guy on the Twitter. Um, I would try and follow him. Uh, I would look at a lot of uh, uh, different sports, John. Um, I do uh, uh, basketball, a bit of ice hockey, stuff like that. I try and pull bits from everywhere. Uh Donny Buckley's another guy too. I've gone to plenty of his gigs. Uh, wonderful passion, wonderful technical detail. Um, he's an exceptional coach as well. Um, they have, well, you know, that's an extremely high-powered management now. Back in Mayo, um, you know him and Rochford and all those guys. Like, uh, and hopefully it goes well for them because, you know, they only need they only need a small bit just to get there. Uh, you know, scoring forwards, etc. But. Um, Coaching wise, yeah, look at I try and pull bits from everywhere, from athletics, from 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 football, soccer, and um, um, soccer's a, a very well coached. Uh, it's a very well coached sport, and uh, there's a lot of technical and positional requirements that you can that you can tweak for yourself once you're. Uh, in, but you need to you need to know where you're going. You need to know what you're about. So it's 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 your philosophy needs to be needs to be sound and you need to make sure that your players are in tune with that but uh, coaching is good it's an art it's an art not a science and um, combination of both I guess I guess but um, it's uh, yeah it's enjoyable it's good it's just building night after night uh, week after week uh, questioning players uh, driving the thing on and uh, making sure you're all in tune with them um, all in tune with the game plan and game plans and you need adaptable players, you need adaptable coaches and you need to react in the moment and make the right decision because um, opportunities come for many players and many uh, and many people and clubs and coaches and that, but you have to be ready to take these chances when they come. So um, that is it. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's good, John. It takes a lot of time now. It's a uh, time, effort and... Uh, 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 and um, you know, you, you you spend a lot of time uh, planning sessions, uh, uh, tweaking sessions, diverting sessions, etc. So it's um, it's work, but it's very enjoyable. Uh, you know, it's great. I think the game is in a good place. You know, um, club wise, nationally, uh, we're in a good place with the inter county game. The you know the buzz, the buzz is back with this uh, national league now. You look at the crowds as attending the the games on television and the games uh, nationally, like Armagh as a sellout against Mayo. Like that can only drive the thing on. Hmm. I suppose obviously the art of coaching as well, Brian. We were kind of talking off air about. I suppose what would be maybe I suppose some of your philosophies. Look at uh, speed of the ball is king, John. You know, uh, speed of the ball, speed of the player. Uh, I like I like my teams to attack. I like the ball move fast. I like the man moving fast. Um, and it's just been uh, it's it, it's been resourceful, being adaptable, trying to get on the front foot. You know, and then you have to be tactically sound as well. You have to. You have to attend. You have to attend to, 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 to your attacking philosophies. You need to. You need to know how you're going to move from your, from your defense to your attack. Are you a kicking team? Are you a running team? You, you need to bring a bit of variety to that. I think is the key. Um, and then up front, you know, uh, innovation and, and, and given players that canvas that they know that mistakes are mistakes are invited. 
But then, as I said earlier, you don't want to repeat these mistakes, but you need players to, to bring a bit of magic to the thing, to, to try that dummy, that that movement, that fake, that um, that evasion characteristic that you know that it's going to be accepted, that, that it's fine, that uh, we will get enough scores to win. And I guess, look, the Holy Grail is... Um, the Holy Grail is converting a high percentage of shots from 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 inside that uh, that scoring zone, which takes work. It takes creativity to get in there because uh, teams are playing they're, they're 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 playing deep blocks. They're playing deep defensive blocks. Of that, there is no doubt. But um, I guess my philosophy, you could say, uh, you know, coach led, player driven, and. Get everybody aligned, get everybody moving forward, hoping to develop the thing. And you need plenty of fun as well, too. You need you need competition in your training sessions, keeping the score. And you need you need fun. You need the crack. Now, obviously, there's time when the crack and that has to stop and you get the bit of work done. But um, you want to develop a bond with your team and with your players and make sure that they are... Um, enjoying the thing and progressing and improving you know and that uh, you're not on the team like this is this is my number five and this is what he's doing and you know you need to you know you need to do some of this better to get up to his level but it changes you see week after week you know because opportunity will present for everybody the following wednesday or tuesday night and then there's reserve games and there's senior games and there's challenge games and um be ready when the chance comes to take it and to take it with both with both hands that you're leaving yourself in the best position to make my job as a manager, as a coach, challenging because, um, as we said earlier with Calvin John, competition breeds, uh, it breeds success and it breeds a uh, positive energy and a positive vibe in a squad. So, um, yeah, uh, going good, going fine with lots to learn. I have loads to learn and loads to improve on. Brilliant stuff. I suppose how much kind of time goes into maybe you know coaching, managing teams right now. Obviously, you've your week off at school, but no doubt it's constantly on your mind. Uh, yes, it certainly is, John. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, you, 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 there are phone calls, texting, emailing. Um, you're meeting your pods. Uh, uh, you're getting training sessions ready. You're liaising closely with Martin McKinnon, our S and C guy, who's excellent. Uh, you're talking to your fellow coaches, John and Mark, who are brilliant help to me in Castle Rahan. Um You're constantly communicating with your team captain, with your with with your with your leaders. Uh, uh, you have your leadership groups across gyms, etc., and things like that. And that's uh, they're brilliant to take to take some of the some of the lift and some of the thing off. But um, there is no doubt, John, that it's taken that it's taking, and it does take um, a substantial number of hours and um, minutes across the week. To was it like what county was years ago? I would say possibly yes. Yeah, I'd say it's at that level now. There's no doubt that uh, that clubs are at that level now. Um, you look at the you look at a lot of intercounty managers. You see the 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 guy going to Donegal is retired teacher now. Colin O'Rourke left his principalship in Navan to take on the mead job, um, just so that he can commit fully to the thing. Um, uh, certainly, that intercounty thing, uh, the model, uh, the you know the thirty plus hours, wherever they say they're playing, there is no doubt that's true because. Um, they are given a great commitment, all those players across many, many counties, and they're to be they're to be commended for that, you know. But for coaches and managers, yeah, it's uh, it's a hefty workload, you know. But it's it's enjoyable because um, I guess we love what we're doing, John, you know, and uh, we want to develop players and develop strategies and develop uh, a group of players together. Brilliant stuff, Brian. Brilliant stuff. I suppose uh, to wrap up, Brian, who be some of your top players to go and pay and to watch these days? Um, oh, I like Reno O'Neill. I like Reno O'Neill from Armagh. He's he, he's an excellent player. Look, the cliff, the cliff is phenomenal below in Kerry, and uh, like he's such a physically strong man. Um, Kilkenny in Dublin has always been phenomenal. Love Sean Kelly from Galway. Great leader, great leader. Um, and he has this knack of ghosting into that just left or right of the D. He just ghosts into those positions and he slips the ball. And his, uh, his tally of goals in, in big opportune moments is very, very high. Um, Walsh is very skillful, of course, in Galway. Um, Rory Grugan is a very uh, multi-talented player in Armagh. I like him. Um, look, McBrearty can do loads in uh, McBrearty can do loads in, in, in Donegal. Um 
there are certainly lots of there's lots of quality players out there. Uh, it's just getting lads that'll do it when it really really counts. I think uh, James McCarthy uh, finally picked up uh, picked up Duddy, uh, Dublin Donegal and Banya actually in early January and. He wasn't maybe a week buried, uh, maybe the honeymoon is postponed, John, but James McCarthy was rocking it that day, like, and they were very impressive. I think they could, they could be back this year now with um, a drive to, you know, eliminate Kerry. So watch this, uh, watch this uh, space, I guess. Um, Tyrone dead of loads and loads of quality players. Love, love Hampsey. Hampsey and McKiernan are quality defenders and they can do a little bit of everything. They're, they're, you know they're, they're they're gritty and they're, they're good ball players. Colin Boyle would be your type of player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ, he was brilliant for for many years for Mayo. Um, look at Mayo, Mayo. Yeah, the press high and and look at I hope I hope they leave O'Shea on the square and kick ball into him and get runners coming off. You put O'Shea, you put O'Shea to the square and maybe and and, and maybe Ryan O'Donoghue in beside him and and um. Killian O'Connor to the top. Killian O'Connor to the top of the D, and 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 there's there's a more direct game plan, John, that Mayo could get benefit from because um, if you rewind their Tyrone final, which I think they're only recovering from now in 21, uh, they had they had, they had opportunities that day to kick bloody ball in, but they don't do it enough, you know. You can have all the running, 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 but sometimes there's nothing wrong with just going direct and going um, going across these defenders and getting it into uh, getting it into a full forward that he can win it, especially with the mark, you know. Mm. Uh, but Colin Boyle was brilliant. Keegan was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's given so much to Mayo. Just phenomenal player, and like his scoring record, um, his scoring record in in the big big games you know we talked about that earlier like like vd really coming up getting a point when it matters when you're a point or two down you rewind all those mayo games and it was keegan who's driving the thing who gets the equalizing goal or keeps the thing going and he was the one who kept the flag going when they were some of the other guys fell away in the tyrone game in 21 but jesus he gave an exhibition for the whole uh, Ireland final that day and um a phenomenally uh, rewarded and awarded player, and he can do a lot. You know, um, won a club title this year, and they, they, they'll be fancying themselves again, I guess, in Mayo next year. So um, there's lots of quality out there. Yeah, there's lots of quality out there. Um, you need guys that's going to man mark. You need very adaptable halfbacks, and you need midfielders that can control a game. You know. Um, you need midfielders to control the tempo of the game, and then you need your strikers and your attackers generally doing their job, you know. But it's tough work. Like, if you're on the 10 and 12, like, you're expected to cover 9, 10, 11, 12 kilometres and get back up the field to contribute in the scoring end. So it's um, it's tough, but sure, that's their jobs, you know, and they need to do the work. Hmm. I suppose within Cav and Brian, don't want to fall out with anyone over this one. <laughs> yeah. Within Cav and who would the players should be looking at? Yeah, look at uh, 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 Garen have a lovely young team at the minute. Uh, uh, they have a lot. Of, they they have, they have a lot. They have a lot of talent. Um, I like uh, I like the McDermott guy in Kilgarry. He can do a lot. Yeah, he had a very good season last year. I think he's very direct, very pacey. Um, good to see Connor Smith coming back as well too, because he's had a lot of injuries. So um, hopefully things go well for him uh, for Calvin this year. Uh, I know he's back in in the squad. Uh, Cross a lot that have a very fine squad of players. Patrick Lynch, when he's on his game, is very direct. Uh, James can do loads as well, of course. Too had a few injuries, so hopefully we see him back now soon for. Calvin having because um we need him at full tilt and i would put him in the middle of the field um i would bring him to the number eight and and, and build around him there because he can do a lot um and then you look you look further you look further around uh having a good 20s team last year as well too probably should have taken an ulster championship so there's certainly talent coming through but um yeah, there's there's players everywhere, John. They just need guidance. They need inspiration, and they need um, they need work, and you know, arm around the shoulder, and then an occasional kick up the you know what as well. <laughs> Oshin Carden was a very long winded answer there, Brian. <laughs> Oshin, Oshin, Oshin's the man. Oshin can do everything. <laughs> <laughs> very long winded answer. Very last question to wrap up, Brian. Yeah. Of course, you're the te- you're you're a teacher. Obviously, you're coaching yeah. teams. There's, uh, I suppose, what life advice would you give maybe a person maybe make that breakthrough onto a team coaching anything? 
Um, I think uh, get a mentor, get someone you can talk to, um, play games, get away from the inverted commas drills. Now, there's nothing wrong with a drill, but it needs to have a purpose. It needs to have a scenario. It needs to, you need to uh, tell your players we're, we're, we're kicking from A to B now, and this is why we're doing it, because we do that in a match. Uh, I think develop both sides of your players, keep the thing fun, keep it energy and plan the sessions, you know. Don't come arriving to the pitch at 10 to, 10 to 7, uh, scratching your head because um, you'll not be long been found out by all groups of players at, you know, at, at, at youth, at uh, minor, at underage. You need to be prepped and planned and ready to go. And, and then, of course, that plan could change inside 10 minutes that you're adaptable. But I think it's to have a bit of energy for it. It's to have the passion for it. It's to read up. It's to look. Go and watch sessions. I go early to games, very early. Uh, I go and watch warm-ups, you know, and then go home and write it down because you'll never remember everything. But I'd be very fond of the pen, as the boys know. And, um, uh, yeah, coaching is uh, coaching is an art, but uh, have the have the... And be brave and be confident in yourself and go and, you know, say, this is this is what we're doing and this is what uh, uh, we need to do and this is why we're doing it. Know your why is another another good tip for any developing coach, you know, certainly um, why are we playing this game or why are we doing these runs or why that, you know. So it's, uh, it's, it's be prepped, it's be organized, be passionate. Um, and develop a bond with your players, hopefully. You know, that's what you want. You want to bring them on as, uh, as because they're people and, and that's it. You're coaching people. You're not coaching footballers. And it's to look after them. It's to uh, make sure everything's going well off the field as well because we have all stresses in life, John. And there's... Um, there's a lot of pressure now on, and there's a lot of pressure on everybody. There's a lot of pressure on people as we come out of COVID, etc. Uh, there's 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 work to be done. There's um, lots going on in people's lives, I guess. So we have to appreciate that. And if they miss a session or they miss two sessions, it's not the end of the world. But just don't make it a habit, you know, because you need them turning up, doing the work, and you need that consistency that will develop both um, night after night from a coaching end and from a playing end. But it's all enjoyable, and uh, just to commend yourself on the pod there, I think you've a you've a huge variety of guests, and you've a huge variety of um, interviewees, which is great. And the thing is good, and you're reviewing uh, uh, games, and you're previewing games, and um, you know we had Martin on a few weeks ago, and look at best of luck to him with his um, with his whole uh, uh, movement in, in in Rammer and in Virginia. That's you know that's that's massive work, and you know the work he's done up there and the meeting he organised is is brilliantly is brilliantly uh, appreciated, and, and and you know things like that are brilliant because um, we need to look out for each other. Yeah, I suppose very very last question, Brian. I don't want to be here all day with you, but I suppose like yeah. mental health and obviously within the GA and obviously that's what Martin, obviously Martin Tyne from the Cab Club Challenge yeah. Fist Bridge has been kind of talking about, and he raised obviously thirty six grand like mental health within the GA, Brian, and looking after players, and you know it all it is all very relevant. Yeah, very relevant. You know, look, at lads need lads need lads and ladies need um they need nurturing and they need to be they need they need to be they need to be cared for and they need team bonding nights and days away and ice cream vans and you need to get them gear and you need to mind them and you need to respect them and show that they can all bring value because um there are many many other opportunities in life out there there are many other sports and look at you you obviously want the multi-sport model as, as the triangle but as they get a little older when they're coming up the triangle hopefully that they're picking the gaelic you know because there's um there's basketball and there's a lot of stuff going on and uh look at players travel of course now and it's certainly now uh, post uh, post pandemic there's going to be huge opportunity for players to travel which is um which is great, and 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 send them off with your blessing, John. Send them off with your blessing that uh, they're gonna they're gonna go, they're gonna keep in touch with you, and they're going to obviously see the world and do what they need to do, but that they'll come back, you know, and hopefully they'll come back fresh and come back energized and uh, and hungry. But you keep them in the loop because um, that's important, you know. We need to look out for each other and. Um, have to crack because you're uh, you're at you're at Calvin games in there and, and and the buzz is good you know um please god now we kick on and and have a good season 
Brian Donahue, thanks a million for joining me this week. And of course, this podcast is brought to you by yourgoretch.com. You for Google JMAC podcast get 15% off on the website. The very best look this year, Brian. And thanks a million for joining me. John, thank you. Talk to you soon. No bother.